waters and resonant with the songs of birds. There were wooded groves and well-kept fields, spacious villages, their lands neatly divided. The tips of the wild banana bent seductively to the hand, and when the wind blew, the gods let fall a rain of flowers. What holy fire hides beneath the surface of the human world? In the ancient time, the gods turned the ocean until its dark waters yielded up Amrita, the elixir of life. Gods and demons battled for possession of Amrita. Mortals went to their perdition weeping in the storm. Water subsided, but the world was still unfixed. Java was saved, pinned to its place halfway between earth and heaven, at the foot of the sacred mountain, Meru. Night in the village, light in the house of the scribe. From leaves of the lontar tree, he recites the ancient text. <laughs> The stories say only Amrita brings eternal life. Yet the stories themselves, etched on palm leaves, carved in stone, shadows on a linen screen are from a time before time. The earliest Indonesians are worshippers of the elements. They live in small villages under the rule of local chieftains. All things are alive with the spirits of ancestors. Bring offerings in the beating of the drum and songs of praise, for you too shall be gathered to the fathers. From India, powerful winds blow south and east. The islands of Indonesia lie directly in their path. 
The sea trade brings new skills, new ideas, and village life yields to a world of palaces and kings. Local craftsmen build shrines that celebrate the two great religions of India, Buddhism and Hinduism. the sanctuary of Goa Gadja, mysterious creatures guard the realm of Lord Shiva, greatest of the Hindu gods. Deep within, three linga, symbols of creation, mark his invisible presence. Buddhism, the unfolding of the self into ever higher levels of awareness is imaged in the many layered leaves and petals of the lotus. Take refuge in the Buddha and in his eternal law. Turn from desire and leave behind the world of suffering. Be mindful of the teachings which reveal the order of existence and transcend passion, ceaseless and turbulent. Where the gods nailed the island fast between heaven and earth, in the green heart of Java, the pilgrim reaches Boro Budur, the cosmic mountain. The ascent is a spiritual progress which transforms the perception of time and of space. The Buddha of the East, in the posture of meditation. The Buddha of the North, absence of fear. Buddha of the West, I call the earth to witness. The Buddha of the South, I grant the wish of the suppliant. As the pilgrim journeys to the summit, around and around the labyrinthine corridors, narrative reliefs unfold before him fables of enlightenment from the Buddha's 550 earthly lives. Reborn one last time as Prince Siddhartha, Buddha tastes the sadness of human life. Man, drawn forward by a hundred threads of hope, does not see death, as the wretched elephant, sated by the pleasure of his food, does not see his chains. From the narrow pathways of the phenomenal world, spirits draw the pilgrim upward to a higher realm of formlessness.
the summit of Borobudur. Round terraces meet open sky. No stories. The narrative is over. The ultimate is within sight, though beyond the pilgrim's grasp. Pilgrim, all things are mine. There is nothing to practice, nothing to prove, nothing to gain, nothing to lose. All is dream, all is illusion. lie in the hands of invisible gods. Huayang, the play of shadows, is a distant survival of ancestor worship, the old faith of the islands. Behind a linen screen, an unseen puppet master tells stories of heroes and kings. The figures are at once hidden and revealed. It is a kind of invocation, controlled by the ritual magic of music and language. The spirit world appears in a benign and even pleasure-giving form. From where he stood, the son of the wind god saw the temple rise from the plain, gleaming like crystal. Its walls were adorned with trees and magic animals, great lions, monkeys, deer, and the frail Kinara, half human, half bird. If Barobudur is a labyrinth, the Ramayana reliefs at the Hindu temple of Prambanan are a kind of theater. The Tears of the Monkey King. Lord Garuda said, Come, Vishnu, bearer of the sacred wheel. The fish in the sea said, Come, come Vishnu. Vishnu. The Brahmin said, Come, come Vishnu, come, come and save the, the earth from, from demons. demons. So Vishnu descended to earth as Prince Rama, great slayer of demons. But in the court of the king, his father, Rama's young and beautiful stepmother whispered against him. So Prince Rama and his wife Sita were sent into exile with his brother, the faithful Lakshmana, in the dark forest of Dandaka. At the palace, the heartless queen celebrated her triumph with music and dancing. Rama and Sita were happy in their green retreat until the clever demon king transformed himself into a golden deer. Rama set out to hunt the magic beast. Sita was left alone. The quiet of her forest home was pierced by a serving maid's screams. The demon had come to steal Sita away, upsetting the household rice. In the confusion, the dogs had their fill. Rama grieved and the forest fell silent. As he knelt to fetch water, Brother Lakshmana felt the patter of a salty rain. High in the treetop above him was the monkey king, weeping. Noble princes, he said, help me to regain my throne and I will rescue Sita from the demon. <laughs> The great monkey army set out for the island of Lenka to destroy the demon stronghold. 
with Rama the archer and Lakshmana at its head. They did not neglect to bring their pet mongoose. When the battle was won, there was much feasting with fish and sweet pancakes and leeks. Even the Brahmins drank palm wine till daybreak. The serving maids partook of the banquet and the high priests chanted a prayer to Lord Vishnu's divine incarnation. In the year 930, the temples and palaces of central Java are suddenly abandoned. The courts move east. At dusk, the joyful Kinaras sing with voices sweeter than moonlight, melodious and tender. The snake woman spoke to the sage and said, the sun is setting. Touch the water and honor the twilight. The lovely and perilous hour is here when owls fly and lamps are lit. Javanese art now achieves a classical perfection. Sacred images transport the faithful to a realm of moral and aesthetic harmony. In the goddess of wisdom, human and divine have become one. You are pale, friend Moon. Can it be that you too think only of the Princess of Kadiri? The blacksmith transforms and purifies the material world. From fragments of meteorite and iron ore, sky and earth together, he forges the kris, sacred sword. The Indonesians, brilliant metal workers since the dawn of history, created images of an enigmatic blacksmith hero whose craft mirrors that of the gods. In his holy fire, base metal is refined, and the soul after death made perfect and immortal. Beyond the power of sword and fire, beyond the power of water and wind, the spirit is everlasting. In the 15th century, as the new faith of Islam spreads from the northern coast, the old believers retreat to the highlands. At the mountain temple of Suku, the goddess Dorga, thunderbolts in hand, presides. And the turtles who bear the weight of the ninefold world and comic demons 
whose origins go back to the archaic culture of the islands. The stones are carved with fables of resurrection, and Lord Garuda still guards the elixir of life. Sacred bird, brighter than the splendor of the sun, proudly you bear Amrita, the elixir of life. On wings of gold, bear us upward, for immortality is gold. Thee, Lord Garuda, do we come for refuge. Tell me tales of the old ways. Let me return to a time before time. Four centuries ago, the king's daughter fell sick, and a wise woman from the south was called, who healed the girl with her singing. In gratitude, the king entrusted her with his most valued possession, the magic scrolls, Wayang Beber. Thus were the scrolls preserved, for the wise woman's home was in Pachitan, ringed by mountains and far from the battlefields of the north. Ki Sarnen is 13th in the lineage of sacred singers from the wise woman's village of Pachitan. The scrolls tell of Prince Panji, who disguised as a humble storyteller in the marketplace, wooed the beautiful princess of Kadiri. Accompanied by his two loyal demons, Prince Panji rode into battle against his rivals for the hand of the princess. Wayang Beber is to keep a holy vow. When someone in the village has been sick, they call me to sing the scrolls. Then everything is good again.
the story ends with a truce, a marriage, and a feast beneath a rain of flowers. As long as the rivers flow into the sea, these stories shall be told and retold. Yeah.